All right, this is Dave Bennett from mochi-crew.com, and it is August 2nd, 2012, and I just came out with something I think is going to be really helpful for all the newbies, especially the internet newbies who want the easiest version of the Moji UAP uh, to work with, and those of you who are familiar with it, that's on the training videos, this is a really, really easy way to start promoting whatever you want, thousands of pages at once, and it's very cool. It takes about two and a half hours to learn, and the first half an hour is installing the software and taking care of all the common things that people have questions with and so forth. Well, even then, there were people who were saying, okay, I still have trouble with some concepts, and for instance, some people, they had trouble figuring out how to, for instance, and I'm going to a V4. That's what we're going to wind up talking about. I created a V4. <laughs> all this is an entry way for the v3 people would say okay if I have a keyword list and it goes on really 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 deep just to give you an example okay and you can do that and you can produce pages with that and then they say all right if I want to delete the old keywords to put in new keywords and these are not real these are just placeholders they'd say I have a lot of trouble figuring out how to do things like shift click like that you know or somebody would say uh, this is hard to do and get right some people would accidentally delete that way and they'd accidentally delete some other stuff they shouldn't delete by the way of course never mess with a header row that's necessary for all these placeholders for where everything goes so just leave that alone uh, but people would say would have trouble with that that's one thing people were having trouble with uh, so I came out with a new toolbar um, uh, macro it's underneath format sheet it's called drop all okay let me click off first so you can see what's going on so for instance let's say I want to drop everything under var2 var201 and var204 okay in other words I want to drop all of these to make room for new keywords watch this format sheet drop all okay and I can select the column and hit submit and it's gone and for those of you that know how to do it, hold down your control key or your shift key. I can select everything between, say, VAR 6 and VAR 2, 204, okay? So I can do that. Hold down the shift key boom, and hit cement. And there, it's all done. That just makes room for all the new geo-targeted um, city-state combinations if I want to do that. I came out with a version of the V4 that doesn't need that, believe it or not. <laughs> and then... Also, if you want to delete your keywords to make room for new ones, then there you go. Just use that, drop all for whatever it is that you want. Just select and hit submit. Okay, and it's done. Piece of cake. Makes room for whatever you're going to put in here now. Okay, now you won't necessarily understand that if you're new, but keep it in mind because you're going to understand where we're going here pretty soon. Let me show you something else if I open this with all the original stuff. Now we have a toolbar version that generates our menu. So for those of you with a V3 who had trouble figuring out how to copy your keywords, paste them into the menu column. It's further on down right now. It's at the end of the file uh, where you would replace any, any spaces with dashes for URLs and then break those keywords up into the columns. Now you just hit menu generator and tell it where, you, where your keywords are. For example, var2 will work fine because the keywords are there. Matter of fact, let me cancel so I can take the focus off. I'm just going to grab a list of keywords. Menu generator var2. I need 10 columns. Boom, boom. 10. 10. That's what you need for this kind of a project. You can use a different number for your own custom projects. And hit submit. And it's done. That just erased what was like five minutes worth of work thinking things through and having to concentrate. Now it's just automatically done. We have a lot of functions in the Moji toolbar you can learn about as you go from our training if and when you want to get to it. Uh, this goes deep and it gets to projects that are huge that you, many of you will never want to bother doing. Others of you might just want to grow into and see what you can do with those. Anyway, here's the point. I got rid of that and also people said can we have a default website to practice on and so I did that I created a profile that's already done for you it has the FTP connections and it allows you for example I'll grab this one it allows you to put the pages up on a tester website that's already there okay and it already has an FTP user FTP password it's already got the FTP info for the direct connection and it's a special FTP, so it does not need the slash public underscore HTML uh, for the root folder because this is just, it's not the main FTP information for the account. It's a different account I set up for people to be able to use. All you have to do here is give your project a name. 
So that way, when 10 people, 20 people, 80 people, however many people find out about this and they go putting up runs on this website, that's what you're going to do. So you can see what it's like. You can check them out, see how they work, learn how the sitemaps work, everything else. Um, you want to keep your pages separate from everybody else's. You want to do something for yourself. So give it a keyword related name. Who knows what you're offering? Could be automated dash use dashes not spaces this is a url right no spaces in urls forex dash software just whatever you put up here make sure that you copy it copy and that's what you have down here because it needs to ftp up the pages to the same place where the sitemaps are going to be generating all the links from when the sitemaps get generated they're built assuming that we are indeed putting our pages there okay so that's all you have to do with this then you hit next then you hit process so really this is pretty simple there were a lot of people were asking about backlinks they we had a column in here for backlinks and backlink anchor text and people had a bunch of questions on that that of course is in the U, UAP v3 but for the starter series I decided take that out it's advanced who needs to learn that while you're trying to learn this? So I took it out. I took basically everything out. And even the image you need, I came out with a, I just went and found a default placeholder image that was good enough. It basically just says click here. <laughs> and that's it, it's an image. So <clears throat> everything about the page, it gets you to click the banner. And the banner says click here. That way when the page says um, top recommended choice for automated Forex software, the image is that click here image. If it says, um, best dentist in Augusta, Michigan, then it's click here. So it's just a default image. So you don't have to think about getting your own image. You can learn that later. And here, of course, you could just put whatever it is you're calling your project. So I really, really made it this easy. You change this change that to your own link whatever link clickbank affiliate link short url uh, tiny url main page of a website deeper page of a website anything as long as it starts with your http colon slash slash it's got to start with that yes it can have www dot or not it's all it, it's whatever your link is is whatever your link is if it's something like tiny url that and then how does that work anyway right it's uh the uh, something like <laughs> like that that will work you can do that if it's a clickbank cop link that will work you can do that too domain.com and then if you want some dash page you know whatever dot html or whatever else it is or just some dash page just whatever the actual link is will work boom now whenever they hyperlink just right click remove the hyperlink because this is a CSV file and you're not supposed to have hyperlinks in there. Okay. Now we still see location and keywords and that's basically the end of it. Okay. So let me just start from the beginning and show you how this is going to work now for those of you saying, how easy is this? Because there, I, what I wanted to do was create this, which teaches you like half of the stuff for the V3 that's a little more advanced and you could absolutely know how to get the basic part of this done now as a matter of fact it's so easy you almost simply add some kind of a name like a company name product name service name person's name if you're promoting like an internet coach and you're trying to brand someone uh, anything like that uh, you just add the name in the one field add the link that you want all the people to redirect to or go to that's really it and then finally add in all the keywords and if you are doing a run that's about geo targeting then you would add that too else you won't and that's how that was broken down so I'm actually gonna walk you through some runs right now and show you how it works let me open just kind of like some sample stuff here really fast let me get this open I opened one keyword list for let's say homeopathy maybe you're trying to <clears throat> promote somebody who teaches about homeopathy nationwide so we're gonna say this has nothing to do with geo targeting it's just there now that's for some specific thing like that let me open another one we're gonna do a run right after that same website because it's a tester website and I'm gonna show you how easy it is for you to learn how to do these things back to back we're just doing it by repetition and this is gonna be for automated Forex software just on the fly boom 
Okay, so then we're going to do that. Then we're going to do something that's a touch more advanced, and that's this. We're going to promote a dentist. So yes, we have our dentist keywords, but we're going to say we're trying to promote a dentist in a certain area, like maybe they service these cities in California. Now, these are not actually local to each other. I just grab some city states real fast and throw them in here. It's like all the A cities in California. I just truncated it. And you can use much longer lists for keywords, but then keep in mind, uh, the longer the list, the fewer pages you have per keyword, so the less total power you have per keyword. And there's a balancing point in there. Flip side is you don't want to create all the pages about one keyword because that's too specific to only one keyword and you want to get some spread in there. You want to have a bunch of pages about a bunch of related keywords and that's what something like this does. A bunch of pages about a bunch of related keywords that we're just assuming work for our project. Okay, I didn't add, I don't really have one in mind. Uh, so here we go. Let me just show you how you do the work now because this is actually easy enough for you to start off with. Now, here's how it goes. The first thing we need to know is this. Okay, this is going to be our mojisamples.com site. Okay, this is where all our pages are going to go up. The front page is going to stay the front page. All right, just the way it goes. Because, and, and it's okay if somebody accidentally overwrites it. I don't need this for anything. I'm not trying to get traffic to my site with it because these pages are going to change all the time. As everyone goes using it, this is going to be a bunch of pages going up. I'm probably going to have to get into the, the, um, the hosting account and delete chunks of pages here and there. So if I'm just deleting pages here and there, that's why. Don't count on this to be big for you all by itself. This is a sandbox. It's a testing website so that you can throw stuff up and see your projects and see how they look. So when you put stuff up on it, where do you go to see how your projects look? Here's where you go. Bottom of the page, there's a link called Sitemap. There's also a link called Related. And I'll get into that in a second, but take a look at this Sitemap. If you go there, it has the main a uh, list of master sitemaps. That is one sitemap from every different project you do. Okay, and that forms a master sitemap. So this thing will grow with time. And again, as I hop on that site, I'll just stop and delete this thing along with a bunch of the test pages to keep it clean. Okay, I'll try not to delete anything somebody put up the same day. You know, I'll delete older stuff. Um, just to keep it clean because probably there's going to be like 80,000 pages pouring onto this a day in very short order. <laughs> so of course it's it's too much and too varied uh, to promote anyone and it's it's going to gum up fast enough that I, I'm going to hit a max number of files I can have on that account. Okay, Because there is such a thing. About 80,000 to 250,000 files is as many as you can put on one hosting account. After that, because of the way things work, the disk file indexing system has to take too long to look up each character followed by each next character to find each page that somebody requests. And that impacts not just your own partition um, of that disk, but all the other guys on that disk as well are affected equally and it slows down everyone's sites. It deteriorates performance. That's why all cheap hosting services, you can't just put unlimited megabytes or gigabytes of pages up without them sooner or later having to move you or something. And usually you can put up almost as big as you want. You can put up videos because there's still one file or two files, 10 files, 20 files, but it's not 80,000 or 250,000 different addresses, which is what slows down the file indexing server or system on any disk. Okay, so whatever. Coming back to the point now that I lost half of you, <laughs> the Moji sitemap here has is the master link for all of our master sitemaps for everything we produce. And I did one run, and that was because I need to make sure these links click somewhere. They cannot just be empty. If I click this thing, it has to go somewhere, and it does. And if you read this page, you're going to find it's different, and it is. For Google, these are unique. Okay, let me go back. And it's keyword optimized for different terms, different searches. Okay, if I go here, same thing now, and you'll even see some of the verbiage changes. This is just kind of to show off what's possible. Okay, and it goes further and further and further. You can have these pointed same pages or different pages, even if it says the same keyword. Look at this. If I click on this once and I click on it again, it could be the same page or a different page, but with the same word. 
flip side. If I click on this, it could click to what would be the same or a different page and using the same or a different word. And that's just the way these go. I just am showing off what's possible with this V4. So you don't get locked into thinking inside a channel. You keep your mind open to what's possible. We can control literally everything that we do. The page title matches the H1 tags and the top level tags and yet it doesn't keep repeating itself because that's not a good idea. Repetition forever looks false to Google Post Penguin. Okay, so you want some variation in there. Can you make these match exactly? Yes, you easily can doctor the file to make it match all by yourself when you know how. You know, this verbiage relates as well the link and even the pop-ups relate exactly to the keyword of this page okay and then these continue with the theme based exactly on variations of the keywords and they lead to other pages still dealing with the same theme the the links going off have no follow tags like they should and there's one here for Wikipedia, another one for Ask, just so you can see how that works. It's really interesting and you can learn how the software works better and understand just how powerful it really is. So anyway, back to the sitemap. Okay, just want to kind of show you this real fast. What do you have? A master sitemap for those 200 pages because I, I just did one run, 200 pages on that site. I'm not trying to take up space on anyone, but I need the top level pages to be good because if they're not good, Google will drop all other pages anyway. It's just something to learn because they would be connected to the top level page. It's kind of like a tree where all the branches are connected to the trunk. If the trunk has tons, if there are 10 links on that page internally to other pages on the same site and eight of them are broken, then that trunk does not pass muster as a stable trunk. It's not a page that passes the minimum criteria for being good. And if it cannot do that, the branches can't stand either. The trunk is too rotten through. The tree will fall. That's kind of the idea. So anyway, here we go. I click on that and I have sub-site maps. Why do you think we do that? So that we don't have all of the links on one page. Otherwise, you'd have 200 links. Well, that would be okay. But what if you do a run with 2,000 pages? You don't want 2,000 sitemap links on one page, right, to be navigated because no one sees or reads or clicks on those things. Then from here, we have the sub-sitemaps, and they relate to whatever the term is. In this case, mass website generation click. Those are all the mass website generation pages that got created, and these pages deal exactly with what's the, the link terminology is based on what's printed on the page. Uh, for instance, this is Seattle Website Marketing. If I click, there it is, Seattle Website Marketing, and it works from that concept. Okay, that's how this goes. It's really incredibly on page SEO hot, and yet this V4 is the cheapest, <laughs> worst quality run you can do. It's a tester run to get your feet wet. It's got no backlinks anywhere that are good um, because they're not. There's no backlinks. I took it out so people didn't have to get confused by that stuff. Okay, intentionally. So they're not going to be the strongest ranking pages you can do, uh, but they will absolutely be good pages and they're solid and Google can index these things except that of course like I say I'm going to take these down a lot on the test side is whenever it just gets too full right however often um, but anyway the point is you can learn how all of these things work and you can see exactly what's up with every single one of them and it's really interesting to understand this stuff literally all the link title tags are different and related all of the alt tags for the images and everything else are related. Uh, keyword density actually is a variable that expands within a range. It basically goes from 2% to 5% per page. And yet all the pages read right. Uh, the links work and so on. So how hard is it to create a run where you wind up with all these incredibly cool sitemaps?